Hey guys, this is our channel Daily Life and this is Sairi. So, don't forget to subscribe, like and share this video. Science, 8th Standard, Conservation of Plants and Animals, Module 3. Learning Outcomes, Conservation of Biodiversity, in international level, in national level, in individual level. So let's get started with our first question. What is conservation of biodiversity? The scientific management, maintenance, protection and preservation of biodiversity to prevent the animal and plant species from extinction. The simple way to remember what is the conservation of biodiversity is to remember that protecting and preserving the biodiversity from extinction. So let's go to the next question. What does conservation in international level means? Um, international level means organization of something that is at worldwide. And we have in our lesson one organization which is known as IUCN, International Union for the Conservation of Nature. This is an international body which focuses on the conservation of biodiversity. IUCN works with 160 countries in governmental and non-governmental organizations. Since 1964, IUCN releases every year the IUCN Red List or the Red Data Book of Threatened Species. The list contains the information of the species which are at the risk of category I'm sorry, which is the risk of extinction in the categories, okay? So now we're going to see different categories of special status, okay? There is it. So let me read it out. First comes um, all species, evaluate and adequate data. And all species, all the kind of come like extinct species, extinct in the wild, critically endangered, endangered, vulnerable, near threatened, least concerned, data deficient, non evaluated. Then in evaluated, uh, what is it? These, these takes place in evaluated, uh, what is it? Data deficient and uh, yeah, near threatened comes. And inadequate data comes uh, critically endangered, endangered and vulnerable species. Okay. So now we have seen the different categories of special status. And uh, the risk of uh, extinction comes from the least concern. It starts from there. And it ends at extinct species. Okay. So now let's go to our next question. Extinct species. Species that have completely disappeared from the planet. Example, Huli Mammoth, Sabertooth Tiger, Dodo, T-Rex, Great Auk and the Jane Ground Sloth. I hope you must have seen all these kinds of creatures in the movie Ice Age. Okay, now let's go to the next one. Critically endangered species. Species that are facing an extremely high risk of extinction. Example, Great Indian Bustard and Indian Vulture. Um... Critically endangered means these species are very rare. They can be found uh, all around India very often. It's very rare to find them. Next comes endangered species. Species that are facing a very high risk of extinction in the wild. Example, Bengal tiger and rhinoceros. Actually, right now Bengal tiger is a vulnerable species. Okay, so now let's go to vulnerable species. Species that go endangered unless the circumstance threatening its survival improve. It means they can live if the, if the habitat is alive. They can live if the survival, uh, what to say, if that, if their place is good for them for their survival, that their habitat is there for them, means they can live. But uh, if it's not there, then they can't, which means they'll go endangered. So now let's go to the next question. What does conservation at national level means? Our government of India plays a vital role in conservation of biodiversity. There are two types of conservation in India. The first is in-situ conservation and the second is ex-situ conservation. I hope you must have understood it. In-situ means in, uh, what to say, um, 
actually in situ means the conservation of species in their natural habitat the simple way to remember that in situ remember situ as a uh, where they habitat and in okay so animals are being conserved in their habitat and ex situ means not in their habitat partially or not uh, totally from their habitat they are being controlled under many conditions ex situ means the conservation of species from their natural habitat under partially or hold controlled conditions now let's go to the next one we are going to see what all kinds of organization work under in situ conservation and ex situ conservation first in situ conservation national park forest reserves biosphere reserves and wildlife sanctuaries first comes national parks actually in national parks no one is allowed in except the animals the animals are be highly protected from human activities in forest reserves uh what is it it's totally uh, prohibited that uh, no um, harvesting of herd cutting down trees nothing should be taken care it's totally for plants and trees where uh, the plants keep their uh, life alive okay the as i told you vegetation habitat and uh, yeah to preserve vegetation habitat and biodiversity there is no cutting or harvesting of herd in forest reserves then comes biosphere reserves biosphere reserves a large wildlife protected area where some tribal groups live but mostly no one is allowed in that this biosphere reserve area is mainly for the endangered species for their survival then comes uh, wildlife sanctuaries in uh, wildlife sanctuaries tourists are allowed in some kinds of activities are allowed like tourists can go and they can see the animals which are boxed or not boxed so in that way so now we have seen four in in situ conservation now let's go to ex situ conservation first come gene bank gene bank means uh, they keep some genetic materials uh, which is being uh, filled under uh, which is being filled in the temperature of minus 196 degrees celsius and uh, they use liquid nitrogen for filling it while there why the, uh, the the and uh, those kinds of these uh, genetic materials they are kept uh, in artificial uh, ecosystems so that uh, what is it those kinds of species they live next some seeds bank seeds bank is a store where they store where they store the seeds for planting purposes so that shortage of seeds don't occur for this main reason only uh, they are making this thing okay now let's go to zoological park okay zoological park uh, is where animals are being uh, what is it animals are being displayed for the people okay tourist come they come they see they enjoy the place and they go okay but the animals also where humans and animals they both meet animals are being displayed in box or uh, i mean they are being displayed in box or not in box okay they are being in an open uh, area and then comes a botanical garden okay botanical garden is where humans and plants meet okay in these places a variety of plants are being collected cultivated and conserved for their the scientific education and research and even many also recreational purposes okay in this uh, places plants are being labeled and arranged in their various habitats for each habitat each plant will be there and they are being bred experimentally and everything occurs and so i uh, complete an in situ conservation and ex situ conservation okay which means we are almost to complete the national level and go to the individual level okay before that we have some points to be noted in india there is advisory uh, body which is known as national biodiversity authority nba okay this body they take care of the conservation so and also um, to protect the indian biodiversity many laws are being implemented and i can say some laws like environmental protection act 1986 fishers act 1897 forest act 1927 forest conservation act 1980 wildlife protection act 1972 and wildlife protection amendment act 1991 there are even two projects like project tiger and project elephant okay project tiger is mainly that um, tigers which are the national animal of india 
that tiger should not be extinct okay it must live for that purpose only this project tiger and for project elephant for elephants then comes institutes even many institutes that um, that what is say organizations that take care of the conservation of biodiversity like um, wildlife institute of india wildlife protection society of india world wildlife fund wwf nature conservation the foundation people for animals and conservation india so guys right now we have seen many institutes i mean like organizations many laws implemented by uh, the government for conserving the nature and we also have seen advisory body which take care of this conservation of biodiversity now we are ready to go to individual level okay individual level means what can we do to conserve our nature okay so there are many ways like recycling of paper uh, you might wonder what is the relationship between biodiversity and paper i'll tell you guys papers are uh, are made from the trees raw material okay so while that time if we waste paper or more papers are being uh, cut in uh, i mean more uh, trees are being cut down then papers are more which means trees become reduced so because of this purpose they recycle paper mostly and uh, the papers can be recycled for 6 to 7 times then reducing the carbon footprint mainly every uh, what is it mm, there should not be a lot amount of release in carbon dioxide which will increase which will darken the carbon footprint we should have all we should always have a light carbon footprint then go reforestation you might wonder what is a reforestation it's nothing but a deforested area okay in that place uh, if they allow the plants to go they don't they don't do anything they uh, they'll just leave the land and go while that time the plants will start to go automatically that is called reforestation then decreasing pollution as i told you air pollution water pollution land pollution decreasing all the kinds of pollution then reducing human demands which means uh, uh, banning the use of animal products and clothes ornaments medicine or food can help stop the poaching of animals to save the animals on the planet then burning of fossil fuels should be minimized yeah if we burn fossil fuels then uh, what is it carbon dioxide will be released in a more amount so we can minimize it then reducing invasive species as i told you native species should be alive so which we can reduce the invasive species then use public transport for short distance or use a cycle yeah, as i told you for a short distance we can walk and go or we can use a cycle or also uh, we can use a public transport so right now guys we are in facts isn't it that's amazing we have uh, actually we're going to learn many facts in this module and i'm going to tell it to you so a first fact is conservation of insect biodiversity is a difficult task in order for conservation to work efficiently identification and documentation of insect species is required however since there are approximately 750000 insects along with more than 2 million still undescribed insect identification and documentation and then further conservation becomes an extremely daunting task the second uh, fact is according to 2014 report listing critically endangered um, species uh, vulnerable species india has 988 threatened species and around 132 critically endangered species on the list the ganga shark pink headed duck and hawksbill turtle are a few critically endangered species on that list which was uh, which was given at the year 2014 then uh, then comes uh, there are totally 103 national parks and 536 wildlife sanctuaries which was a, it was being created in india 2010 and there are 72 zoological parks in india and then comes uh, we are going to uh, yeah we also have another fact okay which is reintroduction of an animal or plant into the habitat from where it has become extinct is also being carried out for example the gangatic gharial has been reintroduced into the rivers of uttar pradesh and rajasthan where it had it became extinct then uh, let's come to another fact the hunting of tigers for their skin and other parts that have medical properties was legal in india till 
Once their hunting was banned, a survey showed presence of only 1,827 tigers. Hence, an immediate plan to save its national animal, the tiger, was launched by the Indian government in 1973 as Project Tiger by introducing nine tiger reserves across the country, including Corbell National Park, with around 1,000 tigers. This number has now increased to 47 reserves with 2,226 tigers. And uh, the main aim of Project Tiger is to create a safe and ideal environment for the growth and survival of tigers and to protect them from extinction. And so guys, we have our last fact, okay? World Wildlife Fund for Nature or WWF, which was established in 1961, has completed more than 13,000 projects to stop the degradation of the planet's nature, natural environment and to build a future in which human lives in harmony with nature. It runs around 1,300 projects around the world over 150 countries. So guys, as I told you, we have learned many, many facts. So, as I told you, Thank you. So our next video will be uploaded very soon. And I hope you must have understood the whole lesson. Now you're ready for any kind of test with any kind of question. Okay. Bye guys. Sending off SIV. Bye. Bye. Bye.